One of the things that really intrigues me is that whenever the Quran talks about stars, stars, because first of all, Quran uses several different words, several terminologies for stars. The common terminology is Najm. Najm means star and its plural is Nujum. Is a Shamsuku Viratwa is a Nujumun Kadarat. The plural is Nujum. One Najmi is a Hava. Najm, that's singular. And on other places, the Quran uses another terminology for stars that is is a sama un fatarat vizal kawa kibun tasarat kawa kibun kawa kib in plural from the beginning itself i have had this feeling that there is something deep about these two words the reason is that stars was something that was completely different in the minds of the people 1400 years back and stars today is completely different for our mind when we think of stars we can immediately think about how large they are. Most of the time, larger than the Earth. Our Sun is an average sized star. On the other hand, for them, stars were tiny, tiny little objects, tiny lamps, like fixed fireflies in the sky. So, star is something about whom the knowledge of science has increased so much which can hardly be compared to the knowledge of other things spoken in the Qur'an, which science has discovered now. So when we read the tafasir of the Qur'an from the people who read it thousand years back, their work is amazing, but there must be something missing. So I want to talk about one ayah for now. One najmi is a hawa, that's Surah Al-Najm, the very first ayah. Here it says, one najmi is a hawa. I swear by an najm. There, there is one particular star that Allah is swearing about. And Najm doesn't mean any star in the sky. Okay? There is one particular star that Allah is talking about. Or it can be one particular category of star that Allah is talking about. So Allah is swearing about one particular star or one particular category type of star. And Allah doesn't just say, I swear by the star. But Allah says, I swear by the star when it becomes Hawa. The word Hawa the word of interest in this ayah is Hawa. This word, how this word is generally translated in our uh, translations is generally it is translated as fallen or I swear by the falling star or how it should be more properly grammatically arranged is I swear by the star when it falls. This is how general translations are and these translations are from hundreds of years back generally. But here it's the translation of the word Hawa from Lughatul Quran, volume number 4, page number 195 and 96. Uh, this book, Lughatul Quran, actually it translates Dictionary of the Quran. Uh, it's a great book, you should check it out. It's available online in four volumes. One of the meaning that's mentioned in the Lughatul Quran is falling. But apart from that, there are many other meanings that this word Hawa has. And uh, the meanings, I gathered some meanings which are related to, which might be related to physics and astronomy. One of the meanings is, uh, Hawa means the empty space between two mountains. Another meaning is Hawa is also the root word for the word Mahwa which means atmosphere. And Hawa also means when it is used in verbal form it means to hum, humming. Now if Hawa means to fall and it also means to hum and Hawa is also the uh, root word for the word Mahwa which means atmosphere. So Hawa can also be translated as forming of atmosphere. If, if changed into verbal form from Mahwa, it may mean formation of atmosphere. Uh, and it also means empty space. Then, here is one of the interpretations that I put forward. Nobody is forced to accept this. It's a humble interpretation. A living star is always under the process of fusion. And as soon as this fusion stops, the star is dead. And when the star dies, it turns into white dwarf or black hole or supernova, depending upon its mass. If you search on YouTube, Space Voyager sounds NASA. You will find it's also on the official page of NASA on uh, SoundCloud. You will find there that the universe is not quiet, but it's constantly producing a mind-blowing, beautiful sounds, a lot like humming, in the plasma, in the form of electromagnetic waves. Not through air, there is no air over there, but the space voyager could accept the 
electromagnetic waves and could turn it into sounds and we could hear it. Now NASA hasn't gone near the sun and it hasn't got the sound from near the sun. By the way, there are fake uh, YouTube videos which shows NASA's the sound near the sun is the voice of some religious stuffs and uh, th those, all those are false. All those are false. We haven't got the sound from near the sun. But I'm sure that I can only assume the sound that is generated by the, the electro in the form of electromagnetic waves by the fusion of the atoms on a Najm on the stars and here we are talking about one of the star which Allah is swearing by. Now that's one of the interpretation so understanding this concept we can very well relate the Quran is saying I swear by the star the star that hums one of the translation can be hums of Hawa that's one of the interpretation but then Mahwa also means atmosphere and it can be turned into its verbal form and then it will mean become Hawa and which will mean the formation of atmosphere. Then the falling of the star, the one of the translations of Hawa is also falling. So falling of the star and the creation of empty space, the Hawa also means empty space. I said all those, all these four meanings. So falling of the star and creation of the empty space together these two together can be what the physicists would call the collapse of the star. When the star is dying, it collapses. And what is collapsing of a star? When a star runs out of any more atoms to fuse, then under the influence of gravity, it falls to its center. What does gravity do? It makes you fall. So by the star when it falls, right? That's a translation. And uh, what happens when it's falling creates empty space. The space that was occupied before in the universe is getting empty. So the translation of this ayah, there can be four translations of this ayah and all four of them are correct together. You see, I swear by the star when it hums, this is alive, a living star while the fusion process is going on. And then I swear by the star when it collapses, when it falls. This is the, the beginning of the death of the star, the collapse of the star. And then I swear by the star when it forms empty space. Next is, I swear by the star when it forms its atmosphere. What is this? And this is like, uh, you say that, uh, for example, a black hole has been formed. What is black hole? All around the black hole is what? Empty space and all of the mass is occupied on a singularity. Point like mass and rest all of the star has now become empty space. This word Hawa actually in one word describes the whole life and death of the star. Though Allah knows best, Allahu Alam.